In this episode, what I want to talk about isn't how to carry out a Pearson's correlation, but the assumptions of a Pearson's correlation and how to deal with violations. Important thing, assumptions aren't optional. You always need to check the assumptions. Why? Because violated assumptions yield unreliable or invalid results. Here are the assumptions of a Pearson's correlation. The data are continuous. The relationship between the variables is linear. The data in both variables are normally distributed. The observations are independent and the data are homoscedastic. Let's look at these one at a time. Pearson's correlations can only deal with continuous variables, not categorical variables. A Pearson's correlation assumes that the relationship between the variables is linear. To test for this, you can just do a scatter plot with the variables and look at the regression line. And you can see that these data don't fit a straight line very well at all. They fit a curved line. Well, what do you do if your variables aren't linear? Well, there are two possibilities. One is to transform the variables, which I'll discuss later. Another is to do a Kendall's tau b instead of a Pearson's correlation. Another assumption of a Pearson's correlation is that the data must be roughly normally distributed. And if you do a histogram of the data, you can eyeball it and see if the data fit into a bell curve. These data don't, but these data are a lot closer to a bell curve. What do you do if your data aren't normally distributed? Well, you can transform the data or do a Kendall's tau b instead of a Pearson's. Another assumption is that the observations are dependent. In other words, no one or nothing should provide more than one response. What's the solution? Well, you've got to use a different statistic and the statistic you use will depend on the kind of data you have. The data need to be homoscedastic. In others, they need to be evenly spaced along the regression line. As you can see in this graph, the data points don't vary very much along the length of the line. But compare these, there's so much variation, we've got to say that these data are not homoscedastic. What do you do if your data is not homoscedastic? Transform the variables or run a Kendall's tau b. So, I've talked a lot about a Kendall's tau b. How do you do it? Well, in Jamovi, choose regression, correlation matrix, and then make sure to check Kendall's tau b down here instead of Pearson's. Choose your variables and you've got it. Transforming variables. When you transform a variable, essentially what you do is apply a formula to each measured value. And I'm going to give you an example of transforming variables into their natural logarithms. So the first thing you do is you right click on the column heading of the variable you want to transform. In this case, I'm transforming test scores. Then choose transform. Rename the new variable. I renamed it natural log of test score. And under using transform, choose create new transform. Now rename the transformation to reflect the transformation. And delete equals number sign and source. Now click on FX. Double click on LN, which is the natural log. Double click on the test score. And it will fill in the formula for you. And then click outside the box. Now a new column with the natural log of the test score is created. It's that simple. But which transformation do you use? Well, a lot of it depends on how the data are skewed. Look at these data and notice that they're positively skewed. That is, the tail points toward high numbers. Negative skew has a tail pointing to small values. Here are some examples of transformations you can use to try and account for negatively and positively skewed data. Why bother transforming at all? I mean, why not just do a Kendall's tau b in the first place? Well, Pearson's is a better stat. And to make a long story short, using a non-parametric statistic like Kendall's tau b is something that should be used only as a last resort. Thank you.